everyone welcome to my virtual class i am mom j and i'm your teacher for today happy learning ang lesson natin sa araw na ito ay review about definition theorems and postulates in geometry So, isa-isahin natin sila para maging familiar kayo about sa mga concept na related kay geometry. So, define muna natin si theorem. So, when say theorem, it is a statement accepted after it is proved deductively. Si postulate naman is a statement that is accepted without proof. Ayan. So, ito yung dalawang uh, na-encounter din natin sa geometry. So, define natin si geometry. So, when we say geometry, it deals with logical reasoning to prove certain statement. Ngayon, isa-isay na natin yung mga undefined terms sa geometry. So, anayin natin si point. So, ito po yung kanyang symbol. So, when you say a point, it has a specific position but without dimension, magnitude, or direction. So, ang example po nyan ay tip of a pen. So, a dot is used to represent a point. And a point is denoted by a capital letter. So, yan po. Ang tawag po natin dito ay point A. So, ang name po nito ay point A. Ito naman po ay si point Y. So, pag nag-name po tayo ng point, gagamit po tayo ng capital letter. And a point represent by a dot. So, yan. Ayan, tuldok po. So, next is line. So, yan po yung symbol ni line. So, it is a one-dimensional figure composed of infinite number of points. It has unspecified length but without width nor thickness. It extends indefinitely in two opposite directions. So, ang example po niyan, a straight string. So, in denoting a line, two of its name points are used. So, ito po yung ating figure. So, ang pangalan po ng line na yan ay line AJ or ito po kapag in symbol yan, or we can call this line M. So, pwede natin siyang gamitin using two points yan, or a small letter. Next is plane. So, it is usually represented by a flat surface where infinite number of lines can lie. It has unspecified width and length but without thickness. It extends indefinitely in all directions. So, example, a whiteboard. Ayan. So, in denoting a plane, a capital letter or an uppercase Greek letter is used. So, ito po, itong figure natin, ang pangalan po niya ay plane P. And ito naman po, ang pangalan ng ating figure ay plain alpha. Kasi naka-Greek letters po siya. Ayan. So, yan po yung plain. So, calling your points. So, points on the same line. So, kapag may mga points na nakahilera na, ang tawag na natin sa kanila ay calling your points. So, ito yung example niya. Ayan. So, point A, Y, J are calling your points. Ayan. Kasi nasa isang hilera sila. Nasa isang line po sila, yung mga points. Coplanar points, so points on the same plane. So, ito yung mga points na nasa plane. Ayan. So, si point G, M, B, tsaka A are coplanar points. Ayan. So, points G, M, A, and B are coplanar points. So, yun yung mga points na nasa plane. Pag nasa line, collinear points, kagaya ni G, M, A. Ayan. Pero pagka nasa plane, lahat ng mga points na nasa plane, ang tawag natin ay coplanar points. So, angle. So, it is the union of two non-collinear rays with a common endpoint. So, ayan po yung itsura ni angles. So, paano tayo magpangalan ng angles? So, pwede siya using three letters. At kailangan nasa gitna po ang ating vertex. Yung pangalan niya. Yung pangalan niya ay nasa gitna ng ating vertex. Ha? So, angle YJF, angle FJY, or we can call this angle J. 
Ayan. So, Y, J, F, F, J, Y. Or simply, we can name it using its vertex. So, angle J. Ayan. So, congruent angles. So, two angles having the same measure. So, pag, pagkapares yung dalawang angles, ang tawag natin doon ay congruent angles. Ayan. So, si angle J at si angle R ay congruent angles. Since, magkapares sila ng measures, which is 40 degree. Ayan. So, the measure of angle J is equal to the measure of angle R. Therefore, angle J is congruent to angle R. So, congruent segments. So, two segments having the same measures. So, dalawang segments naman magkapares na sukat. Ayan. So, si AB at saka si CD are congruent segments. Kasi magkapares sila ng sukat. So, AB is equals to CD. Therefore, AB is congruent to CD. Acute angle. So, sa kinds na tayo ng mga angles. So, acute angle, an angle with a measure greater than 0 but less than 90. Ayan. So, pag maliit lang yung buka, acute angle. So, sa angle J, Y is an acute angle. So, right angle. An angle with a measure of exactly 90. So, ayan po yung tura niya. Kung napapansin nyo, kapag ka a right angle, pa-L siya. At meron siyang box dito. So, it indicates a right angle. And then, obtuse angle, an angle with a measure greater than 90 but less than 180. So, pag malaki na yung buka, obtuse angle na siya. Ayan. So, si angle may ay isang obtuse angle. So, yun yung tatlong kinds ng angle. So, what is polygon? So, a polygon is the union of three or more coplanar segments which intersect at endpoints with each endpoint shared by only two non-collinear segments. So, ito po yung mga examples ni polygon. So, triangle, square, or quadrilateral. So, pentagon, hexagon, and heptagon. So, meron pa po yung mga uh, iba't ibang uri ng polygon. So, depende po sa kanyang sides. Sa number of sides niya. So, regular polygon. So, polygon that is both equilateral and equiangular. So, yan po example ng regular polygon. Wherein, yung mga sides niya ay congruent. At yung mga angles din niya ay congruent. Yan. So, triangle. So, a figure formed by three segments joining three non-collinear points. So, this is an example of a triangle. So, yan yung tura ni triangle. So, isa-isahin natin yung mga uri ni triangle. So, B sa kanyang angle. So, una, acute triangle. So, a triangle in which all angles are acute. Ayan. So, halimbawa ang sukat nyan ay 60, 60, 60. Ang buong sukat po ng isang triangle ay 180. So, since acute angle po ang ating pinag-uusapan, Maybe ang sukat nito ay 60, 60, 60. Yan, yung mga angles niya. So, acute triangle. So, right triangle. A triangle which one of the angles is a right angle. So, yung isang part or isang angle ni, right tri ni triangle ay merong right angle. So, ang tawag na natin sa kanya ay right triangle. Obtuse triangle. So, a triangle which one of the angles is obtuse. So, yung isang angle ni triangle ay obtuse. Ayan. So, pag meron tayong isang obtuse angle sa ating triangle, yun po ay tawag natin ay obtuse triangle. So, equiangular triangle. A triangle in which all angles are congruent. Ayan. So, lahat ng sukat ng ating angle ay equal. So, ang tag natin doon ay equiangular triangle. So, yun yung mga kinds ni triangle based on angles. So, doon naman tayo sa kinds ni triangle based on sides. So, equilateral triangles, so triangle which all sides are congruent. So, yan. 
sa lahat ng sides ni triangle ay congruent. Scalene triangle, a triangle with no congruent sides. So, kapag ka ang sukat ng sides na ating triangle ay hindi magkakaparehas, ang tawag natin doon ay scalene triangle. So, isosceles triangle. So, a triangle with two congruent sides. So, kapag may dalawang sides na equal sa isang triangle, ang tawag natin doon ay isosceles triangle. So, na-discuss na natin yung mga kinds ni triangle. So, adjacent angles. So, two angles which have a common vertex and a common side but have no interior points in common. So, this is an example of adjacent angles. So, may dalawang angles dyan na mayroong common vertex. Ito yung kanilang common vertex. Ayan. Ito yung angle na isa at ito yung pangalawang angle. So, but have no interior points in common. So, it, wala silang interior points in common. So, angle ABD and angle CBD are adjacent angles. So, common vertex nila is B and common side is BD. Ayan. They have common side but have no interior points in common. So, adjacent angles. Supplementary angles. So, two angles whose sum of the measures is 180. Ayan. So, ito po ay supplementary angle. Si angle 1 at si angle 2 ay supplementary angle. Since, ang sum po ng kanilang angles ay 180. So, angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary angles. So, angle 3 and angle 4 are also supplementary angles. Kasi ang kanilang sum ay 180. Ayan. So, supplementary angles may or not may be adjacent. So, pwede silang magkadikit, pwede rin yung hindi. Ayan. So, supplementary angles, kailangan lang may sum siya na 180. Complementary angles. Two angles whose sum of the measure is 90. So, pag complementary naman, yung sum ng kanilang measure ay 90. Ayan. So, sa angle 1 at sa angle 2 ay complementary angles. Kasi yung kanilang measure, pag in yung kanilang angles ay equal sa 90. Ayan. So, linear pair. So, two adjacent angles formed by two intersecting lines. So, ito po ay example ni linear pair. So, merong apat na linear pair po dito sa ating figure. So, angle 1 and angle 2 form a linear pair. Angle 2 and angle 3 form a linear pair. Angle 3 and angle 4 form a linear pair. And angle 1 and angle 4 form a linear pair. So, two adjacent angles formed by two intersecting lines. So, linear pair theorem. If two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. So, kapag ka ang ating dalawang angles nag-form ng linear pair, so, meron siyang sum na 180. So, halimbawa, si angle 1 tsaka si angle 2 ay linear pair. So, may sum sila na 180. So, ito din. 180, 180, 180. So, yun po yung linear pair theorem. So, vertical angles. Two non-adjacent angles formed by two intersecting lines. So, ito po ay sample ng vertical angles. So, mayroon lang tayo dito dalawang vertical angles. Si angle 1 at saka si angle 3 at si angle 2 at si angle 4. Ayan. Pa-cross lang po. Ayan. Pag magkakatabi, linear pair. Pero pag pa-cross, vertical angles. So, para mas madaling yung matandaan. So, two non-adjacent angles formed by two intersecting lines. So, vertical angle theorem. So, vertical angles are congruent. So, yung sukan so, angle 2 tsaka angle 4 magkaparehas. Sa so, angle 3 tsaka sa angle 1 magkaparehas din. Since sila ay vertical angles. So, definition of a midpoint. If points P, Q, and R are collinear and Q is the midpoint of PR, then PQ is congruent to QR. Ayan. So, definition of a midpoint. So, meron tayong collinear points dyan na P, Q, at R. At si Q yung ating midpoint ng P, na, ni segment PR. So, ibig sabihin, itong dalawa, si P, Q, tsaka si QR, are congruent. Is congruent. Definition of an angle bisector. So, if 
ray QS bisect angle PQR, then angle PQS is congruent to angle SQR. Ayan. So, ito po yung ating angle bisector. So, ibig sabihin, itong angle na to, tsaka itong angle na to ay congruent. Segment addition postulate. If points P, Q, and R are collinear and Q is between points P and R, then PQ plus QR equals PR. Ayan. Sabihin, yung sukat nitong PR equals siya or galing siya kay PQ plus QR. So, yun po yung segment addition postulate. Angle addition postulate. If point S lies in the interior of angle PQR, then ang the measure of angle PQS plus the measure of angle SQR is equal to the measure of angle PQR. So, halimbawa, ito yung ating figure. Kung gusto natin kunin ang buong sukat ni angle PQR, iyad lang natin si PQS at saka si SQR. Ayan. So, add lang natin to. So, yun lang naman yung mga dapat yung tandaan kapag ka, uh, pinag-uusapan natin yung mga definition, theorem, and postulate sa geometry. Para pagka nag tayo, alam nyo na kung ano ang um, gagamitin yung reason or ano gagamitin yung theorem, postulate, or definition sa geometry. So, yun lamang po. Sana may natutunan kayo sa araw na ito. Thank you for watching! Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Until next time!